Hi, welcome back. Caught me building again today. I hope you're excited about this math lesson. We are gonna learn a little bit more about the distributive property. So grab your supplies and let's get started. last lesson, we talked about Brianna and her postcards. Remember all the places she traveled to and the different kinds of postcards she got? Well, I'm wondering, as we look at our blocks here, hmm, how would you figure out how many blocks we have? There are a couple different ways we can figure this out. How would you do it? I'm going to give you a minute to see if you can write out <clears throat> in an equation how you would find the answer. Great. So, some of you may have looked at it this way. You may have thought, well, I have three here, three rows. <clears throat> I have one, two, three, four over here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight going down this way. I'm guessing that none of you counted them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I hope not. I hope you use some of the strategies we learned in our last lesson. For example, maybe some of you thought, you know what? I'm going to add my four and my three together first. And we would multiply by eight. And as we work through this, four plus three is seven. And if I multiply that by eight, what would I get? Great, 56. Now maybe some of, some of you did it a different way. Maybe some of you thought, you know what? I'm gonna first multiply my eight and my four together. So I'm gonna go eight, you know, let's actually do it over here, yeah. Eight times four, and that's gonna help me figure out this bunch, okay? And then I'm gonna add it to my eight times three. If we work through it, let's see what we get here. We have eight times four is 32. And then we're gonna add our eight times three is 24. If I add these two together, I should get 56. Oh, good. <laughs> it's always good when they match, when we use different strategies. So maybe one you like over the other, and it might depend on what numbers you're using, depending on whether you want to use this strategy or that strategy. All right, you guys, let's keep practicing with our distributive property today. Let's start with this one. What if I gave you 74, and we're going to multiply it by 2? Hmm. Now, how can we split this number into different parts to make it easier to multiply by two. One way, and you might have thought about this, is to break our 74 into 70 and four, right? So we're finding two parts of our 74. And then we can multiply each of these parts separately by our two. So we can do 70 times two. I bet you know that one, don't you? That's going to give us 140. And then I'm going to add my 4 times 2. See that? 70 times 2. And I'm going to add my 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is going to give me 8. And our final answer would be 148. Now, if we didn't have our cubes with us today and we wanted to draw this out, we could draw it out by using a model, right? So we could have our 74 over here and our 2 up here. And if we wanted to break our 74 up into these two parts, we could do that. Maybe this top part is our 70 and our bottom part is our, set, is our 4. Do you see how our 70 and our 4 is going to equal 74 over here? And so that's what we've done. We've multiplied our 70 times 2, you see right here, and then we added it to our 4 times 2, 
right? Because this right here is going to be two as well. Sometimes it helps with those visuals. Now, what if we did this next? Hmm. This is going to be a little bit different. What if we multiplied our 74 by 20? Now, we already learned that our 74 times 2 equals what? Yes, 148. Hmm, but we're not just multiplying it by 2, we're multiplying it by 20 or two tens. So what we can do in this situation is we can find the factors of 20. So if this was 2, 2 times what equals 20? 10. So you see how this is different? I don't add these together to get 20, but right, what I'm doing here is I'm finding factors of 20. Because I already know that 74 times 2 does equal 148. Hmm. But I'm not just multiplying it by 2, right? I need to multiply it by 10 also. So now I'm going to take my 148 and I'm going to also multiply it by the 10. Okay? And based upon all the mental math strategies that we learned earlier, you probably know 148 times 10, or 10 groups of 148, is going to give us 1,480. Okay? Do you see how that's a little bit different? So this we are not distributing in terms of finding parts, but we're finding factors that we're going to multiply. All right, let's try another one. What if I added one more zero on it? Would you know it right away? If we knew our 74 times 20 was our 1,480, what would you do if I was gonna add another zero or multiply by 200? Yes, you would add that other zero or multiply this again. So we can just add one more zero because it's not just two, 20, but it's going to be 200. So in other words, if I were to find my factors here, right, at first we did 20 to find our answer, right? 74 times 20 does give us 1,480. But 20 times what is going to equal 200? 10. So we're going to multiply it by 10 more or add another zero. So it's going to give us 14,800. And you might have known right away, oh, I'm just going to add another zero. What you're really doing is you're multiplying by 10 again. All right, let's do a different one now. Now we're going to take our 74 and we're going to multiply it by 21. Hmm, think about that for a moment. How might you figure this out based upon what you already know by the multiplication we've already done today? I bet you thought, you know what? I already know 74 times 20. Hmm, but I don't need 20 groups of 74, I need 21 groups. So I need one more group of what? One more group of 74. So I'm gonna add 74 times 1, 74, or one more group of my 74. Okay, so it's not just 20, it is 21. So then I'm gonna, sometimes I like to use parentheses. Do we need to in this case? We don't. We know from our order of operations we would do these two first, but sometimes my brain likes to separate them out a little bit to make it easier for me. So 74 times 20, again, is 1,480. Now, we need to add the extra one, because remember, there's 21 groups, not just 20. So we're going to add that extra 74. And our final answer here would be 1,500 and 54, right? Check my work here. <laughs> Maybe do it on your piece of paper to make sure I got it right. All right, let's do one 
even slightly different. We're going to keep our 74 up there. And we're going to say, let's do 74 times 19. How might this one be the same, but different? Well, again, we already know our 74 times 20. Because it is so much easier working with our 10s, right? 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s. And since we already know that, 1,480. But now we're only working with 19 groups of 74, not 20. So what do I need to do? I need to subtract one group of this 74. So I'm going to subtract because it's one less. I'm going to subtract my one group of 74. Okay. And again, is it okay not to have my parentheses there? Yep. It is okay not to have them also. So I have now 1,480 and I'm gonna subtract 74 times one or one of my groups of 74 like that. What would be my final answer? Hmm. I'll give you a chance to think about it and work through it on your own piece of paper. You ready? All right. You probably got something like this, 1,000. 406. All right, so hopefully those strategies will help a little bit. We're just going to try one more strategy today. It'll be a little bit different, not necessarily working with our tens, but working with another number. All right, 16 times 25. Ooh, I wonder what we can do with this to make it a little bit easier to multiply. Hmm. I don't see a 10, 20, or 30, but I'm wondering if there's a way I can multiply a number by one of these numbers to get either 10 or even 100. Hmm. Ah, you might have thought, well, I know that 25 times 4 is going to give me 100. Do we know any relationship between the number 4 and 16? Yeah, four is a factor of 16. So if I want to find a couple of factors of 16, four times what equals 16? Four. Great. So four times four is 16. So I could break my 16 up into these two factors because I know that four and 25 are going to equal 100, right? So I can first start with my this four, and then I'm going to multiply four times 25. If I can write it all out like this, if I want to, aha. Uh -huh. And doesn't that feel a little bit better? Cause I know my four and 25 are going to give me a hundred. And that is such an easier number for me to work with. I bring down my multiplication and make sure I have my four there. So now I have four times a hundred, 400. Okay, so sometimes finding factors like this and multiplying that way can make it a little bit easier. I'm going to give you this last little challenge problem before we leave today. All right, by using the same strategy we just talked about, I wonder if you could figure this one out. Hmm. I wonder if we can make 100 with this 25. So my next question, I know that 25 times 4 is 100. Could 4 be a factor of 64? I want you to think about that. Hmm. Can I do 64 divided by 4 and get a whole number? I'll give you a chance to see. You may want to count by 4s to figure it out also. Once you either divide or count by 4s, you will discover that... Indeed, it is a factor. 4 times 16 does equal 64. So again, that makes our multiplication a little bit easier here. We have four, 25 times 4 <clears throat> times 16. And again, I'm going to group these two together and get my 100 and then multiply it by my 16. And if I have 16 hundreds, what would my answer be? It would be 1600s or 
1,600. All right, you guys, so that's all for today. Have fun, finish up your extra problems for practice, and I'll see you back here next time.